you so well bid. Let's talk some credit too with Peter Baden joining us from FM Investment, senior portfolio manager down at the New York Stock Exchange. It's like celebration uh, in the, the bond market, it seems like today, Peter. Is that the, the right way to look at this? Uh, are we really kind of setting the tone here for the rest of the year to be accommodative policy wise? Uh, it's definitely looking like that right now, Oliver. I mean, we've always known for the last six months or so that we're looking at not higher rates. We were looking at either this or lower. And these kinds of numbers come in and it really kind of solidifies the idea that, okay, lower rates are coming and it's a matter of when rather than if. And so this gives the bond market a little bit more certainty to say, okay, we can go ahead and start extending out the curve taking some of our money that's on the short end and locking in some of those rates that we see that are so attractive right now. I mean, how long was it that we were stuck at such low rates for the last 10 years? Now you got a chance to pick up, you know, over 4% on a 10 year in Treasury. That's where I do wonder about this narrative I hear about all the cash on the sidelines and then a day like today happens and it seems like in order to rotate to the value stocks, it requires selling of the winners. Uh, but there's a lot of folks out there that go, well, there's money market and there's CDs, but like people don't want to get out of that, right? Like they're getting good yield on that. You know, we're encouraging folks to not necessarily get out of it, but definitely looking at saying, hey, take some of that money. I mean, you saw a nice rally in the two year. You saw a nice rally in the 10 year. Take some of that money, lock it in and be able to create some value for if the Fed goes down to Right now, they're saying they want to long term Fed funds will be two and three quarters, according to the last dot plot. So, you know, if you look at where the Fed funds futures are, something like 150 basis points before, between now and next July of cuts, that's six cuts at 25 basis points. You know, that's a little bit less than what we're earning right now. So we're encouraging folks, take some of the money, put it out a little bit longer, and you can get some yield, lock it in or make some gains. Um, by buying some longer term opportunities out there. This is where it kind of comes back to the conversation we were having with Jeff there, the prognostication for the yep. economy, because every time this market gets to six cuts, that's when like yep. we peak out for bonds and then we disappoint and then the economy firms up. <laughs> like we've been doing this for a year and a half, right? We haven't had a darn cut, not a single one. Uh, so is the yeah. view to lock in the yield, brutal. is it basically implying then that this time the economy does actually get hit? You know, if you look at the numbers that are going on, I like to say, what is the definition of a soft landing? It looks like a hard landing for a little while. It doesn't look like a landing at all for a little while. It's somewhere in between to kind of go with a Goldilocks kind of yeah, kind of what we had idea here. Yeah, exactly. And so we think in that environment, that's where you kind of got to go into credit to, you know, Jeffrey's idea there. And we think actually, you know, your oh, spreads are too tight. We actually think 10 year credit. I mean, we're pushing the bell today on our credit series. Z10 actually has a really nice yield, almost 543 in it. And you can grab that, hold on to it. And yeah, it might go up and down, but you're getting a really nice dividend. You're getting a really nice income on it. Almost the same as what you're getting in the short end or more right now, because right now the three three months at 534. Mm -hmm. So it's a great way to extend it. If it is a soft landing, even if it's not a terrible landing, 120, 123 basis points over the 10 year, that's not typically tight at the 10 year range. It can go down to 80 at the tightest. And if it spreads out, it doesn't spread out that much more than the 120, unless of course we're going into like a great recession or a pandemic, nobody's expecting that. So we think it's a great time to go out into that 10 year credit range and really then be able to benefit from and rates come down, credit improves, it doesn't get worse, how's that? And it's a great time to pick up that extra yield that you're seeing out there. Here's where the bond and the stock market meet in a fascinating way is every time I've had a conversation on the credit side about where to pick up yield, the guest always stops short of saying commercial real estate, don't go into real estate, don't go into the troubled banks. They'll say, okay, let's reach for a little yield, but mm, not too far. The stock market today is basically saying that that could be changing. Real estate's ripping, regional banks are ripping. Is this now an opportunity to reach even further deeper for the yield to the stuff that we thought was on the brink, Peter? 
Well, you know, it was interesting. One of the things that might have been overlooked in Powell's pr presentation to the Senate was the commercial real estate crisis is going to take a long time to play out. What does that mean? It means that the banks are going to have plenty of time to build up their provisions and earn their way out of the problems that they may have in their commercial real estate portfolios. You bring interest rates down, all of a sudden their net interest margins start improving. The securities they hold are worth more. All of a sudden the bank situation looks very manageable for a lot of these banks that are trying to figure out, holy cow, I'm upside down in my asset liability or I've got commercial real estate going on. Lower interest rates really help the banks through that whole thing. I mean, I do want to kind of bring out one thing, though. Yeah. And I said the Fed funds futures have six cuts in the next, I, geez, next year. Right. But honestly, I don't think the Fed is going to really start cutting seriously until it sees the whites in the eyes of the data. I mean, when it sees that data and it actually sees, OK, we're looking more towards a recession. We're looking that, you know, inflation is really coming down then I might say, OK, yeah, you're going to see six cuts. So do we I expect volatility? Absolutely. But I think that's why I'm saying start averaging in right now and start looking at what you can do and extending your portfolio, locking in those yields. OK. And uh, to that point, uh, I'm looking right now at a note from Neil Dudd at Renaissance Macro. He's been one of the more optimistic economists that have tracked over the last year and a half. And their case for today, they're saying the rent components are coming down, the sticky stuff's coming down. We are close to getting that SOM rule triggered, like Jeff just pointed out on the chart. The Fed needs to go now. Is there a case to be made that uh, if data soften up the enough in the next two weeks, there could be a possibility of July? No, I don't think July is on the table. No. I think the Fed doesn't has not communicated that. Agreed. And if they do something in July, that's going to terrify everybody. They're going to be like, what does the Fed know that I don't know? Yeah. And that's that's not what we don't want to do here. So I think it does solidify September. And then I think they're going to say, OK, when we cut in September, we're going to wait and see what the data looks like. And then they may come back out in November or December and say, we don't think the data is good enough or we do think the data is good enough. And so I think it's going to be more like that. And I don't think we're going to have a clear one, two, three, four, five, six cuts like the Fed fund futures are expecting. But as we like to say at our firm, the, thing, the, the indicator that has been consistently wrong is the Fed fund futures. Absolutely. So true. Uh, Peter, last point real fast is, uh, are you a believer in the SOM rule? I mean, if uh, unemployment takes up just another you know, basis point, uh, 10, then we are in that state of uh, historical implication for recession. If we do get that in the next employment reading, would that cause you to say, OK, maybe we shouldn't be reaching for yield? Maybe that stuff's going to be exposed? I think Claudia Sam's work is nothing short of brilliant, and I think it's yet another indicator that has to be out there. But I would also say the curve being inverted has always been a great indicator of a recession, and yet we haven't had a recession. So I'm not one to say something will absolutely happen because it was triggered, but I think it's something that you have to put into your collage of indicators and things that drive you in making your decisions for your investments. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks, Peter. Appreciate the commentary. Good conversation. Thanks. Love it. Good uh, look at the credit side there and how it connects to stocks. Senior Portfolio Manager at FM Investments.